Welcome to today's special episode of the podcast. I'm going to be diving into some of the things that shape my life and the way I think about music and making decisions and all sorts of things. This is kind of a personal episode and after I recorded it, I listened to it and almost didn't want to share it, but I was like, you know what? I think that there's some people out there, especially students and younger players, who will definitely take some interest in this and maybe get some value from it. I definitely wish that a lot of the conversations that occurred on the Clarinet Podcast existed when I was a student, and I definitely wish that even a lot of the videos, like for example, Michael Lonestern, when he talks about his finances on YouTube, or uh, other artists talking about their day-to-day lives, I really wish that those resources were available to me when I was a student. So I'm going to put this out there and see how it goes. If you uh, like these thoughts or they somehow shaped your New Year's resolutions, I'd love for you to tell me about it. Send me a message at feedback at clarinet.com. Of course, I'm your host, Sean Perrin, and you're listening to the Clarinet Podcast at clarinet.com. Dot com. I just want to say as a disclaimer, if this is your first episode tuning in, thanks so much for listening, but this probably isn't the one for you today. Why don't you head back to the website at Clarinet and check out one of the over 100 interviews with famous artists and manufacturers and all kinds of other things. And once you're sort of ready to delve into me as a person more, this might be a good one to come back to. So happy new year to all of you listening, and I hope you have a fantastic 2020. Have you wanted to try D'Addario reeds but weren't quite sure which to choose? Here's how to decide. Reserve reeds come in a white and blue box. They feature a traditional blank and are perfect for those who want to focus sound with the quickest response possible. Reserve classic reeds come in a white and purple box. They feature a thicker blank that provides an expanded tonal color palette, clarity of articulation, and added flexibility. And the new Reserve Evolution reeds come in a white and yellow box. They feature our thickest blank and have a heavy spine for added projection and exceptional tonal depth, warmth, and flexibility. You'll have to try it to believe it. Try Reserve Reads now at your local music store or head to clarinet.com slash reads to buy a box right now. Encoda is a new app that lets you stream, practice, and perform tens of thousands of music scores. It's kind of like Netflix, but for music. Get a free trial today. Just search for Encoda on your device's app store. That's Encoda, N-K-O-D-A. Take your clarinet to the next level with a new mouthpiece, barrel, or bell from Bakun Musical Services. With free shipping to the United States and Canada, 14-day easy returns, and expert advice, you can be sure that you're making the best choice for your musical needs. After all, the best time to upgrade your clarinet was yesterday, but the second best time is today. Use code CLARINET at bakunmusical.com and save 10% on your next accessory purchase. That's code CLARINET at bakunmusical.com. All these things I'm going to mention... If I can remember the source of who told it to me or when or where, then I will say that. But this isn't really a scholarly paper, so do forgive that. Um, Also, it's not really direct music advice. I'm not going to tell you what kind of reads to play or how to practice exactly or, you know, what kind of things to do exactly for your career. But these are just things that shape my life day to day. and, And I hope that they can in some way help you to lead a better life to sort of support your music career. Um, I think one way you should think about your music career is that it is part of your life. I I think it's really unhealthy to have it be your entire life. Your your life is kind of like a boat and the music career is along for the ride. The music career is not really around if you're not around. So I think that, you know, some of the things I'm going to talk about tonight in many ways directly influence your career because they enable your career. So think about that as we go along. The first thing I want you to think about is to trim the fat and trim the fat in all areas of your life Um, with clients, with friendships, um, all these sort of things that are in your life. You want to always take the worst of that and trim off the bottom bit every every year. Um, And I got this idea from a book called, uh, I think it was called Book Yourself Solid by a guy named Michael Port. And he was talking about building a career. And how every year, no matter how good your portfolio is, you've got to just take the bottom 10% clients that you no longer enjoy working with, or they're not completely ideal clients and always sort of remove them. And that can seem kind of harsh at first. You're like, well, I, I kind of like everyone in my studio, for example, but, but maybe they, there's one person who you know, maybe got 10 students and one of them is, you know, they're still as good as the other, but they always pay late and they always kind of stress you out because they, they ask for extra help on the weekends and you don't feel like you're compensated for your time and and just they're canceling and that's the person who you'd want to remove. Um, and if you are concentrated on always improving your surroundings in this way, it'll have an amazing effect in a few years um, and you'll feel better. It's amazing how much better you'll feel after you cut 
bad things or things that are wasting your time or sucking the life out of you. I had a recent scenario, I won't go into any details, but I got asked to be part of something and it was very clear to me within moments or days anyways that I did not see eye to eye with this person. They had no respect for my time and also it just was not moving in a direction that I wanted to move in. So I pulled the plug. Um, in spite of the fact that it felt like felt like a good opportunity, um, things aren't always what they seem. So immediately I was like, no, this cannot happen. If I do this, I'm going to give up too many other areas of my life and I'm already agitated and stressed about it. No, it's time to stop. And that's the best way forward sometimes. Not everything that is good for someone else is good for you. What's that phrase? One man's trash is another man's treasure or whatever. I think that applies a lot, a lot in life. Um, but this applies too to advice and feedback. I mean, think about the last time someone told you something that made you feel um, upset or offended. Now, the reason you probably felt offended is because there might have been some truth to it. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta, you know, realize that that might be the case. But if it was really just over the top and you know it's not true then you can safely discard that advice without having to consider it further. Just just get rid of it. Trim the fat, right? But the same goes, ironically, for positive advice. Um, not all things that are said are true in either direction. So just because someone says, you know, great performance or great concert tonight, you know, if that person's your, your mom, they're always going to say great concert because they know you meant well. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes the good advice needs trimming too. So just take that into account when you think about things, whether it's friendships, whether it's clients, whether it's advice you receive, things that you, uh, you hear about, just trim the fat. And I think that that'll really help you on a day-to-day -day basis um, and really lead to an improved life down the road as far as music goes. The second thing, and this is often really hard for musicians, um, but is take care of yourself. I remember a few years ago, I was working with someone who I no longer work with because I trimmed the fat, like I just said. <laughs> but this person was very, very motivated to achieve themselves and so motivated to achieve musically that they they let a lot of other aspects of their life really deteriorate, um, whether it be relationships or their health or especially their mental health and not a very you know great person to be around. But um, this person was very critical of me. Um, because I liked to take Sundays off and I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a religious person or anything, but I was working hard. I was working six days a week, um, teaching like 40 in-home students and uh, I had concerts. I think that month I had like 27 concerts or something that I was playing in and a musical and all these students and all these clinics I was doing. I was working like a dog, but I liked to take, to take Sundays off because I need a chance to rest and relax and and so this person had said, oh, you know, you're just lazy and blah, 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 blah. And why can't we rehearse on Sundays and, you know, have fun just doing nothing with your wife? It's like, well, you know what? I will. I will have fun and relax and enjoy a single day off um, if that's OK with you, <laughs> you know. So don't be afraid to actually rest. Um, rest doesn't get enough credit in our society anymore. I think that a lot of people view rest as being lazy. When in fact, you know, they talk about great shower moments or shower thoughts or whatever. Those are moments of rest. Your brain can only really work through things sometimes if you're resting. There's a reason you have those good thoughts in the shower. It's because you're at rest. So take more time to rest. Take a rest day. Don't practice for an afternoon. Don't practice for a whole day if you really need to. Get a massage. Read. Reflect on something. Go sit at a cafe and have a cup of coffee. Spend some time by yourself. Don't take any technology with you. Just go sit in a park and think. Listen to some music or even not that. Just think. Just sit there. So I think that's super valuable because your body, like I said before, is sort of a means to carry your music career around. And this isn't even about like, you know, food advice. This is more about just mental health and taking care of your your brain, which is really the, the instrument if you think about it. So third thing, and sorry, you might hear some sound in the background here, my... Uh, uh, my daughter's upstairs and uh, it's evening here and grandma's over looking after her. So they're they're chatting. <laughs> Babies aren't really that quiet. Um, anyways, the third thing is take intelligent chances and don't miss opportunities. Now, this is kind of uh, it's going to seem really obvious, but I can't tell you how many people are offered things and then either don't do them or just decide not to do them. And, and we're going to talk in a minute more about like choosing what opportunities to take. But 
if something's a good opportunity and you've been chosen for it, do it. Try it. See if you like it. You may not know if you like it. Um, sometimes, in fact, a lot of the times, you have to do a lot of things you don't like to find the things you do like. I did a lot of jobs when I was younger in university. And uh, I spent a lot of time learning about what I don't like. In fact, I remember a book I read called, um, I think it was called The One Week Job Project or The One Year Job Project or something like that. I can't remember the guy's name except for that it was his first name was Sean, which was spelled the same as mine. Maybe Sean Carroll. I'll have to look it up. Um, but uh, he was talking about how he couldn't think of what he wanted to do with his career. Great book to read, by the way, if you're in college. Check it out. Um, so he couldn't decide. So he graduated college and decided that every week he'd try a different job for a year. So he worked everywhere from like restaurants to like, I think a winery or something. I and mean, he met his girlfriend who then became his wife doing this. So there was one huge benefit <laughs> as well, I suppose. But um, the really interesting thing is that by the end of the book, he still didn't know what he wanted to do, but he knew 52 things he didn't want to do. And he'd learned so much on the, along the way that, um, I mean, I think he discovered he should be a writer because <laughs> it was a very good a good book and a good narrative and a great story to kind of learn from. So I really saw value in that. Um, but he, he did something else, which is important, which is to, if you can't find opportunities or you don't know what they should be, start making some for yourself. That's such a cliche thing that people always talk about, but it's absolutely true. If you can't find um, opportunities that suit you, like make some of your own. Maybe you can't find a music studio to work in that that's near your house and pays well enough. Well, can you start a studio from your house? Can you can you do some in-home lessons? I mean, if you can't find gigs, I mean, can you call the local seniors home and see if they'll let you come in on Sundays and, you know, play music for people who really care about it? Can you go to a, a, um, a mall and, and play music there? Can you can you do any number of things? Um, it's not really impossible. I mean, many people have found a way to to make a music career. There's definitely room for for you as well. So this happens to be something that will apply not just to your music thoughts but also to anything really i mean i remember this old story about someone who uh let's say a woman who gets trapped on a roof of her house in a hurricane and a guy comes out on a boat and says oh you know i'll rescue you here come with me and she goes oh no 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 thanks i'm waiting for god to help me and then a guy comes by on a you know a raft or something hey come here i'll help you and then a guy comes with a helicopter and she turns all these people down and uh then she you know dies and goes to heaven and she says to god where were you i was waiting for you to save me and he says, I sent three people, <laughs> you know, I gave you all the chances in the world and you denied them all. So sometimes help doesn't come in the exact form you think it will or, or whatever you're hoping for is a little, a little bit different, but you still have to take that chance or take that opportunity and, uh, and, uh, and run with it. Take opportunities as they come. Don't let them pass you by because when they pass by, they're gone. They're over. Whether it's a performance opportunity you think you'll regret or a relationship or whatever, like just seize things and take advantage. I mean, this podcast was an opportunity when I started it. I knew nothing like this existed and I, I could have just sat back and waited for years for it to come up and someone else to do it. But I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it, you know, try my hand at things. So number four, and I'm, I'm realizing these are kind of out of order at this point, but this is something my grandmother used to say the first part anyway, she used to say everything in moderation. And there's so much truth to that. But the second part I added in, I said, including moderation. <laughs> so everything in moderation, including moderation. And I think this is, if I may, a good way to, to do things. Because if you're always very cautious, for example, about something, then you're never going to allow yourself the chance to, for example, take an opportunity like we we're just talking about. If you always eat very healthy, your body won't know how to process sugars and anything else when it gets in there. So... If you always save your money, you're going to get to a point where maybe if you didn't save that money and spent it on something, maybe you'd be happier. Maybe your life would be improved or, or um, you know, any number of things. I can think of a kind of personal example, but I mean, my grandfather is very frugal, He's still alive. He's 92 years old, never wanted to spend any money on anything. And I uh, don't want to go into it here, but just, just you know, people and people's mindset is affected by the way. They lived, right? I don't blame him for this, but it's just the way he's always been. I mean, he's a veteran of World War II, and I imagine that going off to fight war when you're 19 is about, you know, what does that do to a mind that's only 19 or 20 years old when you go off and fight in World War II and come home? I think you become a bit introverted and frugal, if he may. So anyways, I forgive him for that, but but um, he recently had a flood in his house. He's living in a nursing home over the winter here, and a flood in his house ruined the whole house. And I think the reason that 
it ended up flooding is because some valve hadn't been replaced for like 40 or 50 years. Um, I thank God it was covered under insurance, but I mean, just an example of where being so frugal and kind of spending in moderation really came back and didn't work out so well. I mean, I think a $3 valve could have fixed this whole situation. Um, so yeah, not every, not moderation and, and, uh, and that kind of mindset, very kind of scarcity mindset, in my opinion, if you're always worried about what every dollar is going to do or every little thing that you eat and all these different things, not being able to enjoy a, a drink with a friend or something like that, or even a couple drinks because it's a special occasion or whatever. I mean, if every moment of your life is lived in moderation, it's not going to be that great. But that being said, if you don't practice moderation, let's say that you turn every day into, you know, a couple drinks with friends because every day is a celebration. That's not good either. That's when things start to go bad. Um, same with your diet, your food. I mean, I've been experiencing some really weird gut issues that I think were set on by some antibiotics I had a while ago. And uh, the, the doctor actually told me this, the nutritionist I'm seeing was talking about how, you know, you can't let the anxiety of eating certain foods that might upset your stomach get to your head because then the anxiety will cause stomach problems. <laughs> So, you know, don't, don't be afraid to just, and oh, and also if you don't eat certain foods, like I was just saying, literally what happens is that, and I learned this, I didn't know this, but if you never eat vegetables, for example, the, the, the bacteria in your gut actually die that eat vegetables. And you'll find that you can't eat vegetables because you don't eat vegetables. Or, or if you have strong sugar cravings, you crave sugar because the bacteria in your gut wants the sugar. Your body surely doesn't need sugar. So it's just one of those things that moderation, yeah, don't eat sugar every day. Don't drink every day. Don't, uh, you know, do things that are extremely exercise intensive, for example, every single day. It's better to go to the gym three days a week than it is to go every single day. Moderation is key. Um, but, you know, you have to give yourself the chance to explore um, a lack of moderation, too, if I can put it that way. That's that's where the, the interest maybe lies. In a, in a habit. So anyways, the next thing is, and this is really important because so many people don't think about this, but develop a plan or a method to make decisions. And the reason this is so important is because if you don't plan ahead, your life is still going to happen. Um, or if you don't know how to make decisions, your life is still going to happen, but someone else will be deciding those decisions for you, whether it's your manager or your, your, your family or, you know, someone else is going to decide what you do with your day, whether you like it or not. So if you don't have short-term plans and long-term plans, nothing will happen. And you'll get, you have, if you're on a road to nowhere, you will get there. You will find your destination. So I have a triangle system, which I've talked about many times before. I think I got it from Garrett Hope's podcast, Portfolio Composer, although I can't remember from whom. But uh, basically, I just rate things like there's three corners to the triangle. Is it going to improve my life and career? Um, am I going to enjoy it? And that's a big one. And third is, does it pay appropriately? And what I allow myself to do is, is uh, if I have three corner options, I take those. And then after that, I, if I have two corner options, I don't have any threes. I, I still am looking for threes, but then I'll happily take those. And if it's one corner options, I generally just work towards looking for two or three corner options. And if you practice something like that every day for a year, you won't even recognize your life when you look back. It will be completely different. Um, and that's just the truth. Uh, it will happen. Like you, you, if you practice making good decisions and being, being strict with yourself too, like if you know that you're going to go to that gig and someone's going to make you feel bad and it doesn't pay well and it's too far from your house and it's the same music you've been playing the last 10 years at the same, you know, engagement or whatever it happens to be. That's not a great opportunity. Maybe you should look for something at least with someone that you enjoy. Start with just one corner if you're a student and you're not sure where to go. I mean, start with one corner. Do you enjoy the people you work with? Do they make you feel good about yourself? Are they positive people? Um, are they people you're going to have to trim in a couple of years? <laughs> you know? Um, did they take care of you and your mental state and what you want to accomplish artistically? Like, yeah, one corner. Okay, great. Is there a way you can make that gig pay? Or can you find a gig with people who, who work that, who work with you that, that, that pays, that pays real money that you can buy groceries with, <laughs> you know, not just buy a new box of reeds. Can you actually pay your bills doing this or, or finding other things that can do that? And the last one is, you know, does it advance your career? Like, is this music pushing you and your boundaries? Is it something you want to be doing? 
So that would be the ideal thing. But if you can only get two corners, one thing I love about this is it enables you to actually do work for free sometimes. Like I was talking about seniors homes earlier. If you're looking for a great way to just sort of try out a recital program, I know of no seniors home on the planet that would say no to having someone come in and, you know, with a, with a keyboardist or maybe a accompanist on guitar or whatever, and play some music for these people. These people are just so happy to hear that kind of thing, you know? Um, but for example, let's say you take an afternoon to go play in a senior's home. You're not going to get paid. Well, is it going to advance your career? Okay, yeah, if you use it smartly and you're going to test some recital material or maybe some arrangements that you did. And yeah, I mean, when are you going to get a chance to play that stuff otherwise? Great. All right, one box is checked. Um, now the second box is going to pay. Well, no. What about the third box? Are you going to enjoy it? Is it going to be meaningful? Well, then, yeah, two out of three. Good for you, you know. Maybe next time a aim for one that you won't enjoy it as much, but maybe it pays and uh, maybe it advances some element of your career. Good, yeah, good. Two boxes, great. So you can look for the three box, or sorry, the three corner items, but if you only got one or two, that's an okay starting point as well. And it, what I like too is it even frees you up to take an afternoon and just read, you know. Is it going to be fun? Is it going to advance you in some way? Sure. Do it. Go ahead. <laughs> Feel good about it. You know, if you have nothing else to do or maybe a one corner item and you choose to do that instead, fine. Good, good, good on you. Right. Um, so the next thing is kind of related, but things take time. Have patience and don't rush. This is number six now. I guess that's something that I wish I knew when I was younger. Um, and it's hard when you're younger because when you're only a few years old, like 10 years old, uh, one year is a 10th of your life. 10% of your entire life was made up in that year. So no wonder that year occupies a lot of space in your mind. And same thing with university. I remember first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and then haha, my fifth year. Um, each one of those years in my mind had kind of like an era to it or an, a different aura, I guess is maybe a better word. It, it was very distinct periods. Um, but now that I'm older, like it's been 10 years since I graduated. So I'm a bit reflective making episodes like this and <laughs> thinking about life. But um, and now being a father and all that. But like I just started realizing that like years now just sort of slip by. Or if I'm told something's two years from now, I'm thinking like, oh, man, I better start preparing for that or thinking about it or how to make that happen. And I never used to think that way. And I never realized it was possible. I used to feel in such a rush all the time. So just things take time. Have page, have patience. Don't don't rush things. And, and, you know, it reminds me of that scene in The Matrix, too, where they're looking down the alleyway and, and they're kind of asserting that like, oh, you know, Neo, you've you've been down that road, you know where it ends, that kind of thing. Um, that starts to be kind of what the years are like. And if you're not careful and you're too moderate with your decisions, and you don't accept chances and take risks and chew the fat, that's where you're going. And one of the reasons time speeds up as you get older, my theory anyways, I'm pretty sure it's true, is that your interesting life experiences actually become less often. So one of the best ways you can not only extend time, but also make your life seem longer <laughs> and uh, enjoy moments more is to always be doing something new, always be doing something different, push the boundaries, trim the fat, change things up. Um, that's how you'll kind of live a refreshed life. And um, those things that you want to happen down the road, they'll still happen if you're smart about it, and you make good decisions. Maybe if you don't make good decisions, they won't. But I mean, if you are doing the right things, relax, give yourself the chance to just realize that it takes time. Don't rush things. You can't one day go from having 10 bucks in your pocket to being a millionaire. It's just not going to happen. It takes time. Everything takes time. You can't go from one day being a novice clarinet player and a week later be a professional playing in orchestras. It's not going to happen. But you know what? It took time for everyone. So don't worry about that. It always takes, everything takes time. So just relax. Don't rush. Let it be. Number seven, and this is these last few are all kind of related, like I was saying, but I think it's important sometimes just start and do it. And this kind of goes along with risk taking and planning ahead. But I know of way too many people who don't do things. And it sounds really obvious, but the things you don't do, you'll never have done. As you get older, like we we're just talking about age and how it affects things. But I think people get a little less confident in starting new things. But it's at a time when they really need to be the most confident because let's say you're out of a job. Well, you, you might have to do something that's slightly different than what you've been doing um, and try new things. But again, don't rush things, right? I mean, if you're out of a job and you have to try some new thing, I mean, I don't know why I believe this, but I also believe things happen for a reason. 
maybe that job will, will lead you to someone who can, can hire you for something more interesting. Maybe you'll learn an important lesson there. Maybe you should learn to kind of embrace the things that are in front of you more, which is one of the upcoming things. But, but start whatever it is you are thinking of doing because you never know what's ahead if you don't go there, right? There's a Coldplay song, some lyric like, uh, like that. I can't remember it right now. But just start things. Start and see what happens. Convince yourself to sit down just for a few minutes and give it a go. Um, whether it's doing your taxes or coming up with a new recital program or applying for a master's program or starting a podcast. I mean, sit down, give it an honest, concerted effort for a few minutes. And the amazing thing you'll find, even if it's practicing, if you practice or do whatever it is you're going to do for just a few minutes, it's really easy to turn that into half an hour. It's really easy to turn that into an hour. Then it's really easy to come back to it tomorrow and continue down this sort of path. I always have this uh, thing that comes to mind when I think about this. Um, I had a student and, and they're very young students. So they were, you know, <laughs> quite honest about their thoughts and they, they wanted to be doing other things than the clarinet lesson at that time. So I asked the, the mother, I said, oh, look, you know, last week uh, I was a little late. We didn't get a full lesson. So do you want to do 45 minutes instead of 30 minutes? And the student was like, oh, no, no, I don't want to do that, mom. I want to go home and, you know, watch TV or maybe they're going out for dinner afterwards or whatever. He wanted to do something else. And that seemed like so long, you know, to us eight-year-old or nine-year-old. Yeah, 45 minutes is a long time. I get it. So I said, I'll tell you what, how about at, at 30 minutes, I ask you if you want to do the full 45 and you can let me know. So he said, oh, okay, okay. So we teach and teach and teach and I look at my watch and I realize it's been half an hour, but the kid seems super engaged still. So I didn't say anything. I let 45 minutes go by. And by that point I had to stop. So I said, Hey, you know, it's been a while. Uh, do you want to continue for another 15 minutes or are you done? So I said, Hey, you know, it's been a while. Uh, do you want to do a full 45 today or stop at 30? And he said, actually, yeah, let's do a full 45. And I said, okay, well, I'll see you next week. And <laughs> he, he couldn't believe that it'd been 45 minutes already. So I don't want to think that I tricked him, but I mean, you know, that's, that's one of those things. So you start something and you just realize it's not so bad and you can continue through it. And then that's a great thing, whether it's, uh, you know, like I said, taxes, dinner, whatever it is, you got to start it. And so this segues right into the next one. Number, uh, it's number eight. Now we're on to, I guess, big journeys are made up of small steps. So that thing you got to start, doesn't matter what it is. It's going to be made up of a bunch of different tasks. And it's sometimes surprising the number of tasks that make something up. I mean, I was thinking about breakfast that I make. I generally get up and make breakfast and coffee for everyone. Um, and, you know, so I, what does that take? Well, I got to put two spoonfuls of coffee in the machine, turn on the machine, put the put the uh, water in if needed. I got to brew the coffee. I got to start cooking an egg. I got to add butter to the pan. I mean, I probably think of 150 steps to make breakfast, let alone something like doing a podcast or planning a recital. I mean, there's thousands of steps, but you still have to take every single step along the way. And one thing to think about too, is that these little steps are investments. And if you make these kind of investments into activities over long periods of time, just like I was saying at the, at the um, a while ago, making, making decisions, I think it was, but these will compound over time. So if you make a little bit of a change every day or a little bit of something every single day and do that for 10 years, you will be just amazed at where you either did go or didn't go. Um, and you, people often aren't surprised by where they didn't go, but it should almost be as much of a benchmark. <laughs> you know, like I am no closer today than I was 10 years ago to becoming a doctor. That is a path that I have not moved along at all, you know, and it's very evident because I'm no closer than I was 10 years ago. But, you know, 10 years ago, I was just graduating school, had no prospects as a musician. And I feel like I've taken a lot of steps that led in a direction that I have found very interesting and maybe it's not for everyone, but yeah, I am not sure that the 10 years ago version of myself would really recognize a lot of the things that I've managed to do or achieve or, um, you know, accomplish or play or yeah, it's quite, it's quite interesting to think about. Um, so if you can make great decisions and make those decisions as part of the small steps along the way, you are going to be on the path to somewhere really great to figure out what it is it is that you want to do, or I mean, even just making breakfast or whatever happens to be. I mean, do these things times many days 
and these small changes will turn into big investments down in the future. So it's like they say with investing. I mean, if someone were to take $50 a month from the time that they're 18 to 30 and then stop putting money away and let it grow in a proper type of account, um, compound interest will be such that if someone else started investing at 30, they would never reach the same um, amount of money at the end even if they put like hundreds of dollars away a month, it's just not going to happen because that extra time and the way the compound interest works, it just makes it almost impossible. So that's kind of the same thing with decisions. I mean, if you make bad decisions for 12 or 15 years and then one day start making good decisions, you're going to be ages behind people who've been making better decisions for longer. So good things take time, but as you make better decisions over time, those investments in decisions will sort of expand and create a better situation than you otherwise would have been in. So number nine here, um, again, this is not really directly music related. In fact, this one's definitely not music related, but I always remember a quote from Glenn Gould and it's ironic because I would refer to him as someone who was way too obsessed with his music and it literally, I think it did him in in the end. Um, he never had any meaningful relationships except with his piano and he took a lot of pharmaceutical drugs, which I think probably ended up leading to his stroke that he had um, at the age of only 50. So, But anyways, he did say something like, in the best of all possible worlds, art would be unnecessary. The audience would be the artist and their life would be art. And I remember when I first heard that or read it, I was like, wow, that is, that is super deep. And in a way, that's all we have. Like, You can't take all your accomplishments with you. You can't take your degrees with you. You can't take the experiences you think you should be having even with you. Like, even if you're the richest person on earth, you just can't take it with you. What you need to do, and this is number nine, is enjoy the small and seemingly insignificant things in life because they're often the most meaningful in the end. So, for example, one thing I've been doing recently is, uh, you know, I've turned off all my notifications on my phone because I can't remember the last time, even the little red badges, I, I just, they agitate me. And I can't remember the last time that I received an email it was extraordinarily urgent. Um, if I'm working and I'm sitting at my desk and an email happens to come in and I happen to see it, then yeah, I'm going to reply. But generally, emails can be efficiently handled in batches. I don't need to be notified at 11 at night when I'm trying to sit on the couch and relax, read a book or watch a movie or whatever I happen to be doing. I don't need to know about some special at the local supermarket at that hour. I don't even need to know something important for the podcast or for work or for whatever. It simply doesn't matter. And if you can realize that and, and take in the, the moments that actually matter, you're going to be so much happier. Um, another thing I've been doing is, is just leaving my phone on my desk sometimes for hours. Like, and let's say I have to be with uh, someone. I, I just don't try not to touch it, you know, and I, I could be bad for this as, as anyone is, but especially when, if I'm looking after my daughter, like just set the phone down I don't need the phone from five to eight when I'm watching her. It's just something that does not need to be around. It's not important. Um, and if you can start looking at the small things and really realizing that those are the things, when you look back, just a, maybe a nice meal with your friends or your family or, or just getting to go out and do something. The weather's nice. I mean, these are the things you should try to pick up on and be like, you know what? That matters. It's it's important that I have people to go out with or spend time with or, you know, that I'm in good health. Think about that too. I mean, many times when I was injured um, with my hand or months of recovery, it was horrible. But many times I, I realized how much I hadn't noticed how great it felt to not have this problem, <laughs> you know, and there is some serious truth to that. I mean, I think that any person who um, has experienced a debilitating injury or, or, you know, some really traumatic event or whatever, never realized how great it was without that having happened. And what do, they, what do they say? You don't realize what you've got till it's gone. That's exactly what it is, you know? Um, and along the same lines, I mean, this is sort of unrelated, but you have to realize that all these things make up your own life and try not to be envious of other people. Like you might think that you want the life that someone has, but you don't know they're behind the scenes. You, you don't want to take someone's, uh, what do they say, their, uh, their feature reel and, and turn that into the way you think their life actually is. So basically what I mean is like, don't look at someone's Instagram account and become envious of them because they're only showing you the best moments, right? I mean, maybe they're, maybe behind the scenes things aren't working so well. They've got a really bad health problem or maybe that the, 
maybe their their mother just died or any number of really horrible things could have just happened to someone or maybe they're going through a lot of stuff that you don't realize right so be careful not to get envious in that way like inspiration is fine okay sure you want to achieve something great like someone else but be careful not to be envious because it's really likely that unless you're having one of the worst you know health problems imaginable and in constant pain or whatever it's really, really unlikely that you would be willing to trade your life if you genuinely think about it for someone else's. Imagine for a second taking everything you've ever done, all the memories you have, all the little things like I was just talking about that mean something. And and imagine someone offered you like, okay, you can take your life, but if you push this button, you're going to become so-and-so, Bill Gates, uh, some great performer, Glenn, Glenn Gould, whoever. Would you really push that button? Would you really want to give up all the little memories and all the things that you have or know that you're about what it means to be you and be that other person? Very, very unlikely. Very unlikely. Um, So think about that. I mean, you're unique. You're interesting. What you're doing is so important, even if you're not going to ever achieve the same level as someone else. I mean, your life is still of interest and value. Um, And you wouldn't want to just push that button and wipe it all away to be someone else. That's not a very admirable thing. You have free will. You can do whatever you want. Um, You might not become something, but maybe that's okay. They say the drummer from the Beatles, for example, the original drummer, he was only with them for a short time. And then they replaced him with, uh, what's his name? Ringo Starr. So Ringo Starr became the famous drummer of the Beatles. They interviewed this guy some years later. He was still a musician and they said, you know, look, I mean, leaving the Beatles must be your biggest regret. And he said, ah, to the contrary, I don't think I really would have liked that life traveling and, you know, being in all the newspapers and whatever. And you could say, well, he's just bitter. That's just the way he is. But now maybe his life worked out the way that was best for him. I mean, maybe the Beatles for him were not filling his three corners at the time or, <laughs> you know, um, maybe Lennon and McCartney or whatever were really critical to him or we don't know. Right. Maybe it wasn't a happy place to be. I mean, At some point, it couldn't have been that happy. These guys, I mean, John Lennon's dead, for God's sake. (laughs) He got shot by one of the fans. That's horrible, you know? So arguably, being in the Beatles didn't even work out that well for him, which is horrible. But yeah, so there's that. I think that the the one last thing I could add, and and this is um, what it is, is to embrace change. And because change is the only constant. So from day to day, you're going to get older. You're going to look back one day and you're going to be like, wow, I can't believe that 10 years has passed or 20 years or (laughs) hopefully 70 years. Um, but the only thing that is constant is change. I was thinking about the iPods recently and how amazing that was back in about, you know, the early 2000s about iPods, iPods, this iPods, that everyone had an iPod. It felt like it shaped a really long time. But if you think about it, iPods came out in like 2001. They didn't really get that popular until like 2004, maybe five. And then the iPhone was announced in 2006. So we really had like three years of, of iPods, iTunes store and all that. It's really only a big thing for a short while. Well, I mean, everything's very different now. One of my life goals when I was a kid was to become a recording artist and record CDs. And I got really put off when CDs stopped being a thing. It was like, I don't get this new medium. I don't I don't like it. I, I want to hold something in my hand. I want to feel like I created a CD. And I imagine people felt like this with LPs and everything else before it. But you got to get over that. I mean, I'm not living in the era of CDs. When I was younger... CDs were a big thing and now you don't make CDs. I mean, even if you do a CD recording project, most people won't want the CDs, which I found out kind of the hard way. Hundreds of CDs sitting in my garage because you get all these printed and no one wants them. People even pitched in on the Kickstarter to help me produce the CD. When it came time to mail them the CD, they would say, well, you know, I mean, could you just send me a download card? I don't have a CD player. So you got to embrace these changes. If you're going to let yourself get hung up on some change that you didn't want or you didn't like or whatever... It's too bad. The opportunities will pass you by, the new opportunities. For example, if I was smart, smarter, (laughs) I don't think I'm stupid, but (laughs) if I was smarter, I would have uh, seen that as an opportunity. Huh. There's no CDs anymore. What is the opportunity of today? Maybe I can start a YouTube channel and play music there. Maybe I can, you know, make a Spotify album or whatever. I mean, there's other ways to listen to recorded music. Maybe be creative about it. I heard of a band recently. I don't know the name. I can't remember it, but they had released a CD project where it was like an app and you would get to remix the songs in the app and make the album kind of your own. Kind of like you used to get those sheets of stickers. You could put the stickers on your your skateboard or your binder or whatever, make the binder your own. 
yeah, what a great idea. What a cool idea. That's the innovators of today. It's not people like me who are like, oh, I don't like, I don't like that I can't record a CD, so I'm not going to make any music. So not a way to live, not a way to do anything. I mean, you, things change, plans change. Um, it's the only thing really that stays the same, like I was saying. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, if you want more episodes like this or less episodes like this or fewer, I guess, um, let me know. You can send me a message at feedback at clarineat.com. And if you are of mind that you'd like to be on the podcast, I actually, in the new year here, I'm going to bring back the listener lightning rounds. So I'm going to schedule some times. You can follow along on social media, on Facebook, and schedule a time with me to chat with me for 15 minutes of uh, Claire Neat fame. And I'm going to be featuring some listeners on the show going forward. So we'll do that again as one of the 2020 things coming up. So hope you're having a great December and I hope you have a happy new year. And I hope that your new year's resolutions go as planned. Thank you so much for listening to today's special episode of the Clarinet Podcast to ring in the new year for 2020. If you thought differently about something or strongly agreed with something or these ideas shaped your New Year's resolutions, I'd love to hear from you and have you join the discussion. You can do this in the Clarinet community on Facebook or by going to clarinet.com slash 126, which is the show notes page for today's episode. If you don't want to share it publicly, you can send me a message at feedback at clarineat.com or complete the contact form on the website. A lot of spammers from Russia seem to do that every day. So if you head in there with the real message, it'll sure brighten my day. That is for sure. So thank you, of course, to all those listening around the world, including you. If you made it to the end of this episode on New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, I applaud your dedication to the podcast. Um, of course, I'd also like to thank our sponsors. We have Encoda, which is kind of like a Spotify or Netflix but for sheet music, you can get a free trial at encoda.com. That's N-K-O-D-A dot com. Also, Bakun Musical Services, you can get 10% as a Clarinet listener off your new accessory purchase. That's a barrel, bell, mouthpiece, case, anything like that at bakunmusical.com. Just use code Clarinet at checkout. That's C-L-A-R-I-N-E-A-T at checkout. I'm sure you know how to spell Clarinet, but uh, there it is just in case you don't. And lastly, of course, we've got Diderio Woodwinds. You can check out their new reserve or evolution reads at your local music store. It's always great to support local businesses. Or you can buy a box by heading to clarinet.com slash reads if you can't wait and want to buy them on Amazon right now. Thanks so much again for listening, and I will see you next time for our regular scheduled programming. We've got episodes coming up with Michelle Anderson, Cornell Volak, Stanley Drucker, and more in the new year. And keep an eye out on social media for some new listener lightning rounds. I'm going to be booking times with people just like you all around the world for kind of 15 minutes of Clarinet fame on the podcast, starting probably in mid-January 2020. So thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you more in the new year. <laughs>